Diamphidia beetle, Diamphidia simplex, feeds exclusively on the plant's leaves and lays its eggs at the roots. The grubs hatch out what looks like a maggot or a cutworm, feed on the root systems, and concentrate the plant's poisons within the body. Bushman will come along, digs around at the roots, and takes some, never all of the grubs, always leaving behind for continuation of the species, but picks them up with a bit of skin, throws them in the scrotum sack from the poly, case strong in his waist, he disappears bush. There we go. Finding his prey, I literally take a grub and squeeze the juice onto the shaft of his arrow. It should be like that, six or eight inches long, made from either, either bone or porcupine quill, with a reed half coming off the base. Now initially, not into the head fair of penetrating himself. That penetrating the prey should go about an inch. So two and a half, three centimeters. The half to then fall off does so not further scare the animal. Basically, a single arrow with the juice of one of those grubs is enough to kill a full-grown giraffe bull, mm. weighing up to one and a half tons, mm. three, three and a half thousand pounds, just under half an hour. That would kill an impala or a human in about five minutes. But the beauty, as we were saying earlier, that the poison, specifically being paralytic, gets into the blood, it forces the heart muscles to, muscles to slow down and stop. You can then take the meat raw and eat it with no side effects. I can eat thousands of plants, kill you here within seconds, but you have to cook the meat so as not to toxify yourself. It's totally unnecessary. The same way though, this one of those smaller leaves, chop that up, throw it into somebody's salad, within five minutes you're dead. Uh oh. A wonderfully painless and untraced way of getting rid of somebody. It's just hard fate. So, uh, <laughs> leaves for later, let me know. We got some stock power back at camp. Oh, yeah. So, say the name of the plant again. Say it louder so I can get it on the tape. It's the Inkong Hukonkonko. Thank you. Now, of course, that is Bushman. So, when you study Bushman, you find that there are nine basic clicks in the Bushman language five major clicks, four minor clicks. From there, up to 200 variations in the clicks themselves. The language is basically built to describe the way something moves, the sound it makes, the way it behaves. So your plant, the inkong is an arrow flying through the air and hitting the animal. The shu, animal running away, kong kong ko, it stumbles and falls. So inkong shu kong kong ko. It's <laughs> oriental eyes, there's the tight headcorn hair of the African tribes, very sparse in his head. Physically tiny with the fat storage in the buttocks. Your male bushman having a permanently semi erect penis. In fact, there's one little guy's fairly well portrayed on here. Um, the female bushman, a flap of skin covering the vagina. So, physically, these people are unique. We believe that a lot of these adaptations have come about for hygiene. I was saying earlier, normally in a bushman's life, they bath twice. The baby's born, it's washed. The person dies, they're washed before they're buried. Um, Water is life, you just you don't waste it. And this is where we believe the hygienic aspect is coming to play. So physically, aside from anything else, there cannot be an argument that you'll break away from some other people. They are just far too unique mm -hmm. in this respect. I think the DNA that's coming around these days is beginning to show that too. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, very distinctive that way. The, the one thing that scares me to a small part is that the moment we start messing with them, we start destroying them. Mm -hmm. And the difficulty, yeah, D DNA is definitely playing a program, but even a lot of the Bushmen, the, the Bushmen per se, that are being tested, are not pure Bushmen. Okay. They, the, the reason I say that we, we get a lot of, of what we call tame Bushmen, especially in Botswana and Namibia, where families have been captured for slaves and for sex by all races and brought into semi permanent communities. The Pucker Bushmen, the guys that I know, have no contact with the outside world. Mm -hmm. In Zimbabwe, we have 43 pure bushmen living in Wangi National Park. There are four of us and now to contact them. Um, three of the, two of those, yeah, three, sorry, three of those guys will never go back there again. Two of them are just too old. Um, one of my other mates is, is actually now, I don't know where he is, I think he's either floating around the States or Tanzania. He, he's, a, another, he's a professional guy. But he, he really doesn't have the interest to go back. But what's always gotten to me is that they, they've created a oneness, not only with themselves, but with the environment that we just we, we can't comprehend. 
Well, I think they were born with the oneness, weren't they? And we're the ones that separated. Yeah, we, you know, we stuffed them <laughs> yeah. up. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, Religion doesn't help that at all. And yet, well, hey, we get into the bush with religion, we can be here for another six months or so. Oh, yeah, no, I mean um, our religion. Yeah. Yet, yet I, I think we, we go a step too far in so much as we try and modify the environment to suit our wants and needs, mm -hmm. whereas they're part of it. The very first time I ever met the Bushman, I watched the little guy crawl between the back legs of an elephant, dance under the belly and tickle his stomach and come out laughing, saying, you know, try this, this is fun. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm six foot seven compared to four foot by rule, yeah. Um, game doesn't react to them like it does us. They, I don't know, they, they, they've just, they've 